Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, and you can find me as Dramatic Knits on Ravelry and Leading Men Fiber Arts on Instagram. This is episode 385, and today is Monday, January 24th, 2022. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more episode. And if you're new, I hope you enjoy what you see today, and you'll check out past episodes as well as, as subscribe via YouTube to catch all future episodes. So, it's been about three weeks since I've checked in with you last, and, well, I've been out of the country. I've been to Mexico, Los Cabos, and back. I've had dental work done, and we've been to Iowa in the past three weeks. So, life has been busy, but good. So, um, yes, uh, we went on our vacation with um, Andy and myself. We went with his brother Justin and our sister-in-law Nicole, and we went to Los Cabos, and we stayed at the beautiful LeBlanc Resort, which we've stayed at that resort twice in Cancun, and we love it. Um, I will say we do enjoy the Cancun location a little bit better, um, but I highly recommend LeBlanc, either Los Cabos or Cancun, if you um, want to treat yourself and have a nice um, adults-only, all-inclusive getaway um, they do it top notch there. So um, we stayed for four nights, five days, and um, yeah, it took a little bit of more time to get acclimated than we would have thought because the layout was a bit bigger in Los Cabos and not exactly the same. Um, so we had to get acclimated, and um, but we did enjoy our time. I had two and a half massages. I had deep tissue, which I won't do again. Um, I had a hot stone massage, which I had had before. They are lovely. And I had a scalp massage. So uh, I enjoyed that. And uh, treat yourself, as I tell myself when I'm on vacation, to relax. And I did. Um, the weather was beautiful. And um, in fact, maybe just a little bit chilly if you got out of the pool. It was like high 70s to low 80s. Um, it was very calm there the first couple of days, which was actually a kind of a downer. There, were, I, You really couldn't hear waves when you opened your balcony door, which I love to hear when um, we go on vacation. I never thought I'd be a beach ocean person, not with this body. But you know what? I don't care. Um, homeboy don't care. Um, I did my first vacation and I said, people don't want to see it, they don't have to look, right? So um, I enjoy myself and um, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time to spend some quality time with our brother and sister-in-law, um, not with kids and, um, you know, kind of being able to be adulty and uh, enjoy beverages and things like that. So it was a really good time. Uh, the flight back was a little bit hectic because um, they moved our flights and we weren't on the same flight with them and we were end up going to have to fly all the way across the country to Charlotte, North Carolina, wait three hours and then fly to Chicago and we wouldn't have gotten in till midnight. So we downgraded our flights and we flew on the same flight with them. Um, didn't get a refund because um, they couldn't do it there. And so um, we were at the very back of the plane and... It was quite turbulent, which was not the best for me, but um, got through that. And then we had to sit on the um, tarmac for an hour while they were waiting for a gate to open up. And then customs was a hot mess. And then it was freezing when we got back. So, you know, fun stuff. Um, and then we drove back that night. We didn't get back till back home till about 1230 because we're about a little over a two hour drive from Chicago. So... There was that, but we got home, we were ready to be home and um, got back to work. I had to get some more dental work done. I've had several fillings done over the past couple of months. None of them have been fun. One they screwed up and I had to have it redone. Um, this one, yeah, I just, I had a wisdom tooth crack, like a chip off. So I had to deal with that for a month, but they were able to just fill it and I've been dealing with getting reacclimated to that. So I hate dental work, but at least they didn't have to pull the wisdom teeth. I still have all four of my wisdom teeth. And I'm like, if I'm 36 and I can last this long without having them pulled, I really do not want them pulled. Um, I hate, hate, hate dental work. I'm sure you guys can all um, relate. Um, but I was in and out in less than a half hour with this one. So that was pretty good. Um, I'm just 
as I'm getting more work done, my teeth are getting more and more sensitive to hot and cold, um, which really, really, really sucks. Um, but, um, yeah. So, um, that was done on Tuesday. And then on Saturday, we got up super early. Um, we booked a last minute trunk show at Fiber Art Shop in Albia, Iowa. And so we got up at like four in the morning, drove, left at five, um, had the trunk show there from 10 to four and packed up and drove home. And it was like nine hours in the car for a six hour day, but it was good. And we enjoyed meeting everybody out there. And, um, it was, you know, good to get out of the store and um, travel and see people. So um, that was kind of a last minute. So we put it in our newsletter, but um, didn't get to announce it here. We are off um, all of February as of right now, but we will be back in Iowa twice at the beginning and end of March. Um, in the beginning, we'll be at Shepherd's Market in the Amana Colonies in Amana, Iowa at the Woolen um fiber mill which is a beautiful location we were there last year so we'll be back and then we just signed on today to do fiber palooza which is in winter set which is um march 26th and um we last year was our first year and we're excited to return again this year so um other than that it's just been a lot of work a lot of dyeing yarn a lot of packing orders and dealing with communication uh emails things like that so yeah, so here we are. Um, I've got some crafting done, not as much side crafting because I wasn't home um, for a good week of that to get like cross stitching and spinning and things like that done. But um, moving right along, I do have a finished object. So what's taking a bow this episode? Behind me, you can see this is the Abby Shawl Collar Cardigan by Elizabeth Smith. And I knit this using um, Harrisville Designs Turbine, which is a bulky... Um, woolen spun yarn so it is has a light twist with a lot of air in it um this is the driftwood colorway and size 13 us 9 millimeter needles and this is a recently finished shawl i just have on this little mannequin which i stole from home or from work this was a relatively quick knit um i will say i'm a little dissatisfied with the sleeves because you just kind of bind them off they are a bit flary, maybe they'll lay down better, but um, we did have my sister try it on. I will get better photos of it done, um, either myself or either my sister or one of our um, studio assistants is gonna model this for us. They do a good job of modeling my finished objects for me, but here it is in all of its glory. It is just an open front shawl collar cardigan and it's meant to kind of I should have probably blocked it with it folded open. I just blocked it straight flat, but um, a good closure would look really good on this. But this was um, done as a shop sample. Since we do carry Harrisville Designs Turbine, I did use about seven skeins on this, a um, little less, but you, um, and this was 40 something inch bust, I believe. Um, so yeah. I'm happy with it to get another shop sample done for our store. Um, that was something else we did this week. We went to look at um, <clears throat> another retail location because we have quickly outgrown our store and we have a realtor helping us find things. And um, we live in a very small town, so commercial uh, property is very, very not around um, or just not what we need. And so I think there's only like four or five listings in our town right now, but they did have um, our antique mall go out for sale, but there's a lot more property than we would want. And it needs a lot of work. And for the price we'd have to pay, I just, mm -mm. so we're waiting, but we're looking, we want to find the perfect location and uh, we want to stay in our small town. Um, we're kind of right in central Illinois, right in between the four major cities in central Illinois. Um, we have Bloomington to the north, Decatur to the south, um, Springfield to the west, and Champaign to the east. And all of the um, two-lane highways that go in between those cities go right through our town. So, um, you know, we don't really want to venture out. We want to stay and bring business to our small town and um, bring visitors in. So it's just finding the right place and we've talked about building but that seems like so much work and I don't know we just we still need to save up and um 
yeah. So really, really have a lot of plans and have ideas and tons of new yarn lines we want to bring in. We are just bursting at the seams with product right now because we are in a very small space for our studio processing center and our shop. And um, it's all in about 1,300 square feet. And we don't want to make it um, look like a hoarder's place. So um, we've all been in yarn stores where it is very cluttered and yarn on the floor, things falling out of cubes, and we don't want to be that. So um, we are just trying to maintain. I keep bringing new things in and keep getting told not to. So we're kind of at a standstill until we can clear some stuff out before I can bring some new stuff in. But yeah, so that's what I finished in the last three weeks. Um, moving right along, what is performing? I'm not going to show you my crochet blanket because I only got a few rows done on it. But um, my first thing is going to be my shaded chevrons uh, baby blanket by Yarnspirations Designs Studio. And I'm using two skeins of Sodar Jewel Spun in the Setting Sun and Midnight Fjords colorway. And I'm using a size 8 US 5 millimeter needle. And I did work on this some last night. I've gotten over double the amount of progress, I think, since we've seen each other last. So here it is. There's my little taco progress keeper. And here's where I am now. So it's just an easy chevron pattern. You can see all the way up there that I've gotten done. And yeah, just using two skeins. Um, I believe they are 200 gram skeins. So essentially four balls of worsted, but they do all the color changing themselves. Um, it is quite a bit dark, I believe, for a baby blanket, but I actually really like that. It's something a little bit different. So um, this will be saved for when a little baby comes around that I can give it to. So enjoying that, and we'll continue working on that here in the next few weeks. Actually, no, this is going to go to the side for a bit because I'm going to show you. I got some yarn to finish another project that I was working on. All right, next up is my Moon Dance Socks. These are being knit for Andy. I'm using, excuse me, let's get real close. I'm using some Lollipop Yarns Traditional Sock in the Moon Dance colorway. Um, this came with a mini for um, cuffs, heels, and toes. So it is two shades of gray and this orange. And um, here is the mini what I have left so far. I did finish the first sock. So that is done, cuff. I do 10 rounds of a two by two ribbed cuff. I do an afterthought heel and a rounded toe. My afterthought heel is the same as my rounded toe, except I knit four rounds plain. And I do pick up um, two extra stitches in each corner and I finagle those as I'm knitting to make sure if I need to pick up extra to, um, you know, from the row below as I'm going around to really tighten up any holes in there. But yeah, so these will be for Andy. And I did cast on yesterday and started the second sock. And I'm knitting these 72 stitches on a size 1 US 2.25 millimeter needle. And I knit my socks top down on two at a time, two circs. Not two at a time, two circular needles. So those are going pretty well. I did take those on vacation and I worked on them a little bit in the hotel room before we left, I believe. And then on the flight there, uh, we were in business class on the flight there and I can actually knit when I'm in business class. I have no room when I'm in economy, um, which we flew home and I was literally in between Andy and a guy bigger than me. Uh, so I was like this the whole time. All right, um, next up is, I believe, a new cast on. This is our next Create and Collaborate Club. We've had two meetings so far at our store. Um, we're doing this through the months of January, February, and March. And this is called Shawl's Well That Ends Well. It is by um, Yaya Black Sheep 
yarn store in North Carolina. Unfortunately, it is not on Ravelry. Um, she designed this using Leading Men Fiber Arts and then created a um, pattern booklet along with a deck of cards which you use to randomly select your yarns and your pattern and uh, your pattern stitch. And um, everybody's kind of taking it a little bit differently um, based on she gives you some guidelines, but you can kind of make it your own. Um, so I am using Perfection, Spring Thaw, and Sweet Cheeks, all on Leading Men Fiber Showstopper, which is our 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon Fingering Weight Sock Yarn. And you need three um, skeins of yarn. And here's what I have so far based on what the card and the, um, the deck chose for me. Here's where I'm at. So it is a um, scarf, stole, shawl, knit on the bias. And so far we did the edging setup. And then I did a basket weave in spring thaw. I did a half linen stitch in sweet cheeks. Garter and Spring Thaw, Striped Garter with Sweet Cheeks and Spring Thaw, um, Basket Weave again, but in Perfection, and now I'm doing Striped Garter with Spring Thaw and Perfection. So here's where I'm at so far. This is knit on a size 6 US, 4 millimeter. So enjoying that. It's a lot of fun. We're having fun just getting together, all working on the same project, but seeing how our projects are turning out differently, not only with color choice, but with the way that the deck is choosing everybody's shawl to come together. So, um, yeah. All right, um, in rehearsal, I have nothing planning on casting on. Behind the scenes, I am still spinning some um, merino silk that I purchased from the fold years ago. Um, it is a 70% merino, 30% silk in a rose colorway. And this is the second four ounces. I had an eight ounce bump. I'm still working on the first four ounces. So not much to show you there, but you can look at the pretty fiber. So that's going. In the scene shop, what else have I been crafting on? I have made some progress on my cross stitch. This is the Modern Folk Embroidery um, 2021 stitch along called Fruits of Plenty. And I'm using two shades of blue DMC and I'm stitching this two over two on a 32 count um, Belfast Lino, uh, Ty Tyco Belfast Linen from Picture This Plus. And here's where I am so far. So this came out in 12 pieces, all this first part here was all January. I'm now in February here and working my way through. And it's going. Much easier now that I have it on Pattern Keeper. And um, do my thing on it. So I'll work on that a little bit more tonight to get a little more progress done. I also have made some progress on my um, Fox in the Moonlight Latch Hook Kit from Hirschner's. So you can see where I'm working across right now. And that's pretty much it on those two. Nothing really too exciting to um, report there. Um, so let's move into In the Spotlight. What am I re uh, watching? So we've done some good TV and movie watching. We watched Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, we rented those on Amazon so that we could potentially go to the movies to see the new Spider-Man or be ready for it when it comes out on streaming. Um, we had never seen any of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, so we wanted to make sure that we kind of knew what was going on, even though they do leave a lot to be... Um, prior knowledge that you would have about Spider-Man to, you know, jump into either story. Um, I then watched Chaos Walking. Speaking of Tom Holland, I knew that there was a movie on Hulu. Um, this also stars the girl from Star Wars. Um, and it is basically about a new world in which um, men's thoughts are 
can be seen kind of like in the ether around them and they can hear um, their thoughts are kind of projected but this does not happen to women um, and uh, basically a girl crashes onto this new world and um, they kind of want to hijack her ship so um, Tom Holland goes on a quest with her to try to save her um, it was okay nothing stellar um, I then finished You Season 2. This is on Netflix. Um, enjoyed the season. Started Season 3. I'm working my way through it. Um, is it amazing? But it's okay. I enjoy it. I did watch Archive 81 um, on Netflix. This is, I guess it was based off of a podcast. We just, my sister watched it as well. Um, and I really, really, really enjoyed it up until the ending. Um, ending was a little bit of a letdown and definitely left you on a cliffhanger for there to be a season two, but I could not figure out this show, which is always a sign, a good sign. So, um, Archive 81 is basically about a guy who is hired by a, um, big corporation in order to, um, restore these old VHS tapes of this girl who documented, um, life inside this one New York City building back in 1994 and um, something happened and there was a fire and about 30 some odd people disappeared um, or died in the fire but they never found any bodies um, and through that um, he starts learning about what really happened and I will just go from there I won't ruin anything but it was really really good um, enjoyed that and then last night I watched La La Land. I know it's been out for years, but I've never watched it. And Andy was watching football, so I decided to indulge and I watched it. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was as, as amazing as everyone played it out to be, but um, I did enjoy um, Emma Stone's performance and um, I enjoyed the movie. So that is also, um, that was on Hulu as well, La La Land. All right, let's talk stash enhancement. I don't have much, but I do have some. First up, I have January skein of Barnyard Knits. Um, I'm, she doesn't do a club, but I usually purchase her. Um, she does a discounted um, new colorway every month. So I usually pick that up on her sock base, which is a 75-25 superwash merino nylon. This is January's colorway called Faded Farmhouse. So going into the stash, no real plan for the yarn that I get from her. I kind of leave it for, you know... Um, projects that may come up that I just kind of want to do something with. And then um, I got my Hello Yarn shipment. This is December's. It is a limited edition American wool blend top in the colorway Just a Glimpse. Um, I should have one, if not two more of these coming. I did cancel my Hello Yarn Club. It was fun to be in, but I haven't spun any of it yet. And I was in it for like nine months. And, you know, that's over two pounds of fiber that I have to spend now from them. So canceled that, but I will show you what comes in the future. And then what came this weekend while we were gone, I got um, yarn. I know you can't really see it. Actually, I'll take it out. Andy just wound this for me before we left. This is yarn to finish the Susan Joy shawl that I was knitting using, sorry, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Fiber Nymph Dye Works. This is her poof base. Um, yeah, I think so. Hold on. Gotta look. Yes, her poof base, which is she no longer has, but she was able to get some in and dye it up for me. This is in the soot colorway. Um, and then her floof base, which is her mohair silk in the winter's deep colorway. And um, I was knitting a shawl holding those together. I'm going to work on that tonight when I watch TV. So um, enjoy that. And that came in the mail. I do have a skein of self-striping coming from her um, that accidentally didn't get put in this package. But she is sending it out. And I should have that to show you next, um, next time I record. And that's it for Stash Enhancement. Nothing outrageous. Um, giveaway. This episode, we are going to be giving away a skein of Regia Design Line Hand Dyed Effects um, by K Facet in color 08857. 
see so shades of blue. And um, to enter to win this skein of yarn, you need to go to the Dramatic Knits video podcast group on Ravelry, be a member of the group, and go to the appropriate thread and answer the prompt in that thread. It's already on Ravelry, and the prompt for this giveaway is, how do you feel about putting pineapple on pizza? I don't do it. I'm not saying it would be horrible. I don't mind cooked pineapple but I usually just like a really cheesy pepperoni pizza. So I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't say Canadian bacon and pineapple, maybe like actual bacon and pineapple. But I feel like when we ever get like a bacon ranch pizza or something like that, the bacon is not crispy enough for me. I don't like a chewy bacon. And I would rather, even the pepperoni most of the time, like if the pepperoni is curled up and crispy, that is delicious. Most of the time it's not like that, it's just okay. But um, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't do it. But how do you feel about pepperoni on, or pineapple on pizza? Give me your thoughts, be a member of the group, and only one post per person, please. And you will be entered to win this skein of yarn. Um, and I will draw for a winner after, um, before I record for episode 386. All right, last episode, we were giving away a skein of Lang Yarns um, Tosca Light. Looks like this. And I should say both of these were generously donated to the podcast to be used as giveaways. And last episode's prompt was, what are the unwritten rules of where you work? Random number generator selected number eight, who is D Nomad. That's Deanna from Illinois. I know Deanna. She comes to the Knitting at the Estate Retreat, and she will be vending again this year with her color street nails and accessories. Um, so congratulations, Deanna. Please direct message me on Ravelry with your first and last name, mailing address, and email address, and I will get this out in the mail to you. Deanna said, I just started a new job, so still learning. I guess with anywhere, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So that's always words of wisdom, right? Always know what those other peeps are up to. So thank you to everyone who entered, and congratulations to Deanna. Speaking of knitting at the estate, um, we have selected our vendors. I will have those posted at knittingatheestate.com here in the next day or two. Um, they are a wonderful group of returning vendors as well as uh, a couple new vendors. We do have about three more spots available that we can fit. So if you are a maker and you would like to join us at the Knitting at the Estate, whether it's just to vend at the market, which is Saturday, September 10th from 2 to 5 p.m., or if you would like to join us at the retreat as well as, well as Vend, um, you can do that. If you are a vendor, you do get um, to register early. Um, and um, there is no fee to Vend if you do um, attend the retreat. However, if you just Vend, it is a $50 um, vending fee. And it comes with an eight foot table with a little bit of room around your space to Vend at. Um, it is a quick setup and teardown, so just keep that in mind. Um, and there are 75 attendees plus, no, it is open to the public. Um, so the registration for knitting at the estate will be, will open February 15th. Um, and if you go to knittingattheestate.com, you will see signups. And from there, there will be a link. There is a link to the event bright page where tickets can be purchased. Um, you will be selecting your actual room if you're staying on site and or selecting offsite. If you want to room with somebody, because um, there's quite a few doubles and one triple this year, um, you can either purchase um, spots for um, everybody in your group, like for the same room for you and the other friend, or you can um, both decide on the room and then both go and purchase those same tickets. Um, if you don't care who you room with, you just pick a double occupancy room and somebody else will pick that same spot. That is how you are going to be roomed um, together is just based on who selects what's what room. Um, we're going to do things a little bit differently this year. Um, I did try to have class signups when you sign up for the room. However, I felt like Eventbrite's 
registration page was a bit too confusing for that. So we are going to do class signups um, later on, but I will have the classes listed on the website at knittingattheestate.com um, for your perusal prior to signing up. I've decided on the classes um, and uh, the teachers are already listed there with their headshots and their background information. So if you want to know who's going to be teaching this year, um, you can check that out. I will tell you um, it is uh, Olga Baraya Kafilian, who goes by Olga Jazzy Knits. She is known for um, modular knitting and um, brioche knitting, and we're so excited to have her. I took a class with her at the Super Summer Knit Together many moons ago, and she's an amazing teacher. She's coming from the Washington, D.C. area. And then we also are going to be having Laura Reagan, who is the owner of um, Created for You by Laura. She also organizes the um, Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festival. Um, she is the new organizer of that as of last year. And um, she is going to be teaching a few different um, stitch classes that includes um, some crochet. There's a crochet class, there's a crochet and knit class, and then there's a knit class. So um, we're super excited about to welcome Laura. She is also going to be vending at the retreat. Um, and she comes from Ohio slash Florida, um, depending on what type of year it is. So or when, when in the year it is, I should say. All right. Um, reminder, if you're local to us, you can join us at the Leading Men Fiber Arts Store every Wednesday night for craft night from 5 to 8, as well as every Saturday from 1 to 4 for craft or noon. Um, anybody is welcome. You can bring whatever you want to work on. It doesn't matter if it is Leading Men Fiber Arts or if it was purchased at the store or what craft you want to bring. You bring it, you hang out, we build community together, right? Also, um, I want to show you some new items that I brought to show you. So, <clears throat> in no particular order, just easier to grab out of the bag. I want to show you we have a bunch of Friend Sheep wool dryer balls. Um, these come in a six pack of dryer balls and you can throw these in instead of using um, fabric softener or um, dryer sheets. You can put these in your dryer and they kind of bounce around with your laundry and help to soften um, your fabrics as well as take care of any static. Um, we have a variety, a huge array, um, but these ones, I have a bunch of them. These look like little sheep, but you can check those out. I'll have them linked in the uh, show notes, which can be found at dramaticknits.com. We also would like to welcome Nomadic Knits to our newest line of printed publications we offer. We do have the latest issue. This is issue 10, Texas, as well as we have the past issue 9, um, that is Iowa, I believe. Um, and so these are um, beautiful um, books. The um, publishers of this book are Melissa and Becky. And they uh, have a whole story um, in the front about, you know, their mission and about them. Um, but basically, they travel around the country and they get to know, um, take beautiful photography, um, <clears throat> work with designers and yarn lines based in that region that they're doing the issue on. And so you can check, um, check out Nomadic Knits on our website. And next, I wanted to show you here. This is the um, Prim circular needle case. So we do offer prim knitting needles as well as prim crochet hooks. We do have a crochet hook roll as well. Fun colorful fabric, fun uh, accessory zipper on the outside. You open it up and it's an accordion style to fit all your circular needles in there. So we'll have again linked on the show notes. And these are 20 for this one. Ooh. Wanted to bring your attention to our felted sky um, needle felting kits. We have painting with wool, we have sculptures with wool, we have, um, yeah. This one is grazing sheep. I thought this one, this one was very popular. Um, and it comes with linen fabric, embroidery hoop, felting wool, two color coded felting needles, beginner's guide to needle felting, detailed instructions um, sheet, 
and a link to video instructions. All you need is a felting mat, um, wool or foam, and we do carry the foam felting mats as well. Um, you get everything in here for $35 for this kit. It's not bad to have everything except foam to felt on, everything to finish it and get um, video tutorials. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not used to talking this much. Voice is going. All right. Last but not least, we have a whole slew of new styles and colors in from Della Q in their Makers canvas. I decided to bring just one to show you. This is the Makers uh, Della Q Makers canvas backpack. It is amazing. You really need to check out the listing to see all that is offered in this backpack. Um, we have seven different colors of wax canvas. Um, I have two in each color. Um, so there are 14 in stock right now of the Makers backpack. Um, I mean, there's just, I, I just can't show you everything. There is a yarn guide in here, a yarn cutter. You can fit about probably over seven skeins of yarn in here. Um, it also comes with a really cool, um, if you see these grommets here, there's a huge safety pin with a bunch of really cool um, brass stitch markers that um, you can keep on there as well. And you've got room for a water bottle or things like that. Um, these are, you know, a treat yourself item, but they are very, very well made. And these go for 128 for the backpack. But again, we've got light gray, petal, mustard, olive, black, blue, red. I think that's it. But again, I'll have them linked on the show notes. You can check them out. And as always, um, with our store, you can get free domestic shipping for any orders over $20. And if you order any yarn um, that is 50 grams or more, that is not already like a commercial yarn ready to go, um, we do offer complimentary yarn winding as well. So if you are not part, uh, if you do not already subscribe to our newsletter, um, you can go to leadingmenfiberarts.com and a pop-up should come up in the first second or two and you just enter your email and that'll get you signed up for our newsletter. I send out about one newsletter a week and that shows you what's kind of taking a starring role in the shop as well as where we might be. And then we, of course we do our monthly newsletter that shows you our new colorway of the month as well as our new knit alongs, new um, patterns, things of that nature. And um, as of 2022, when we do our new colorway of the month, that pre-order period, which is the first week of the month, all of those yarn, uh, yarn bases in the new colorway will be at a discounted price. So a little thank you for shopping with us um, early with the new colorway. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you can check out the Leading Men Fiber Arts Ravelry Group for all the knit-alongs that we're doing over there. And you could win a um, gift certificate to the Leading Men Fiber Arts shop by um, knitting along with us. Again, we don't have any shows coming up in February, so we're going to be hunkered down, dyeing all the yarn, and welcoming all the customers into our physical store here in central Illinois. I would love if you would click the subscribe button and or give me the thumbs up on YouTube. You can find um, show notes at DramaticKnits.com and you can find the show there on the blog, on the Ravelry group and YouTube itself. If you have any questions, please do not uh, hesitate to leave a comment or um, to um, leave a note on Ravelry. And until I see you in a couple of weeks, I hope you make something dramatic.